So, geotechnical fundamentals of uranium tailings. So I, um, I would like to get through just the, just the state of practice that we have in uranium disposal that being followed in Canada. And essentially, as you'll see later on, um, it's primarily in Saskatchewan. So Canada actually is a quite a significant uh, producer of uranium. It accounts for something on the order of about 15% of uranium in the world every year, annually. All of uranium production currently in Canada is in northern Saskatchewan. Now I think it's quite important to notice that that is up in northern Saskatchewan because the, later on we will talk about some of the climate issues that might, uh, might affect our daily disposal. Current uh, preferred method of disposal of uranium tailings is in mined out or purpose-built open pits. Therefore, physical containment is not an issue. But containment of contaminants is uh, often the driving, in fact, is the driving criteria uh, that we have to follow. However, the, the engineering of the tailings deposit plays quite a significant role that you'll see later. Currently, there are three input tailings disposal facilities in Canada in operation. They're relatively deep deposit facilities, up to 100 meters or more of tailings. Um, and one more currently is planned, and this would be a purpose-built tailings facility. That'd be the first one the pit would actually be dug for the purpose of disposing tailings. It is still two years away from happening. Okay, now this, as shown in this cartoon here, the preferred method really describes the typical, typical design. And the typical design simply involves a pervious round. In fact, that is the term that we have been calling it. It's a pervious envelope. It surrounds the tailings all around the pit as well as the bottom of the pit. And it's the bottom of the pit is actually uh, contains a pumped bottom drain. Now this helps in the, through the lateral drift and the raised well to facilitate consolidation of tailings at, later on. But uh, at decommissioning, the pervious round, in fact, is there to minimize flow through the tailings. It helps decrease the gradients up here, and then the tailing deposit itself acts, acts as a, an impervious plug. So the engineering of the tailing deposit itself is quite, quite important. There are two basic requirements from the tailings. The tailings must be placed in a manner to create a, a, a homogeneous or an unsegregated tailing deposit. And tailings must be fully consolidated at closure. Now you'll see that this, this, this has its own ramifications, but let's talk about this one first. To achieve an unsegregated tailings deposit, what we've been successful with is to pre-thicken the slurry to about 35 or 40 percent solids, and then discharge, during discharge, the tailings discharge locations are frequently changed to, to manage the beach lengths and minimize particle size segregation. Now this, this relates to the other component. The, the tailings must be fully consolidated at closure. And what we, why we have to do that is, is it really is a more of a, it's, it's, it's prompt containment of contaminants. Therefore, you would not want to allow any contaminated pore water out of the tailings coming out and discharging into the groundwater after closure. So the tailings have to be fully consolidated at closure. Now this, the, the average temperature is something of the order of minus two to minus four in the northern, in northern Saskatchewan where the uranium mines are located. There's been, generally speaking, there's been a considerable permafrost buildup. I, I've called it permafrost here. We generally call it just frost buildup 
in the subaerial deposit, tailing deposits. Now, we will talk about it later that that has led to us going to subaqueous disposal. But let's just uh, let's just talk about the issues of frost in the tailings. This is a slide from Rabelais in PTMF. Basically, it describes the, the the section through the pit based on boreholes done in 2006. And you see, these are all the frozen layers of tailings that have gone in during the winter months. And they you can often tra track them across the pit and borehole, from between the boreholes. In fact, in the earlier days, we were able to define every deposition season from it, that we would put a seasonal variation from it, or the, the years of deposition based on this, where, we, where these layers were encountered. There's about 30% of the tailings deposit at uh, Arab Lake is in a frozen state. Now once, the estimates indicate that once, uh, once the tailings are thawed out, there'll be about one million cubic meters of consolidation or settlement as a result of that. So it's a, it's a fairly large, large uh, volume issue. Frozen tailings that are a liability, not only due to storage capacity considerations, but also, but also frozen tailings have to be actively thawed to achieve full consolidation of tailings at closure. Now this, this is my favorite slide. It doesn't, it, uh, this, is, this is done in 1993. This is but a year or two after I got involved with the uranium tailings. Um, now this is a heat conduction test that was, this is the conduction pipe where water was circulated through it. And it simply through conduction, it had actually created a sinkhole resulting from the melting of ice, and ice in the tailings and the frozen mass. This is a, uh, uh, the following year, a, a trial that was done at Key Lake for uh, the hot water injection trial. These are just basically standard uh, well points um, driven down to near the bottom of the tailings deposit for, so the water could actually be pumped in and out of the well point. And, and a number of, and these, I think the spacing was about five or seven meters of, of, of spacing here. And this was a trial, initial trial done to see how effective this, this system would be. And this is a uh, trial that was done last year at Rabbit Lake Tailings, Input Tailings Management Facility. This is a uh, Rabbit Lake Input TMF. Uh, tailings have been deposited subaerially most up, up to now. <coughs> now this is a uh, time trial using electrical resistive fine. Now my understanding is the current is to be passed through the tailings and the tailings would act as a resistor and as a result would result in some heating and thawing. Now chemical for, for the time being I put this on hold but eventually before the facility is decommissioned my understanding that this would be the material would be thought using this technology. Now this has led to let us do to subaqueous disposal. Now there are two methods of subaerial or subaqueous disposal that we've been using. Uh, using vertical pipe from a barge. The pipe is actually buried into the tailing so acts as a trimming pipe so that the free thickened tailing spray does not free fall through the water. And then the other is more of a submerged tailings discharge laterals where discharge, the laterals are, are sunk to the top of the tailings and sink into it eventually as the tailings discharge continues. For cover construction, the tailing surface is drained and allowed to desiccate, or will be allowed to desiccate. This has not really been done other than at one facility, which was in fact the above ground tailings management facility, uh, using the conventional old method of tailings disposal. Now the tailings would be allowed to desiccate for a, for a period of about two years, or at least a minimum one summer season. Fill for the cover, 
is to be placed in stages, commencing in early spring when the tailing surface is still frozen. Now this is something that uh, we have some experience with this from, as I said before, from the, the, uh, the slimes pond at the Rebel Lake above ground tailings management facility. Now this was a standard old subaerial de deposition where tailings were discharged from, from the dams to where the central pond and the pond formed where the fines and the extra water accumulated. Now the water now has been drained, the tailing surface, the slime surface has been allowed to desiccate and in fact in this case it, a filter cloth layer was put on prior to putting the fill on. Now this is being done I believe late March and the, the idea here was not to allow any traffic other than the first lift of fill. So the, all the traffic is actually on top of the first lift of fill. This is just the dozer operating to finish off the first lift. The current uh, disposal practice for uranium tailings has evolved from cumulative experiences from various tailing disposal facilities in the uranium tailings, I mean, over the last 40 years. Now this is actually, some of this work experience was already available by the time I was involved. I got involved about 20 plus years ago. The highlights of the paper are, are presenting this, this uh, method of current practice.